Okay, I just want to run through, quickly run through one of the questions that deals with the Morbius theorem. Okay, and the question goes like that here. Okay, honestly, this is perhaps one of the easier ones. Okay, you will see one in a minute. So, we got imaginary number plus one to the power of 2008 minus this number over here. Okay, now, you might be intimidated by the large power 2008. Well, don't be because as we know about complex numbers that sometimes there's a tendency that they repeat itself. Okay? But we just leave that one side in a minute. Okay. But you also know the Morbius theorem, which means that you can bring the power inside here into the, the equation over here like that. Okay, let me just have a quick check. And yeah, that's right. You can bring the, the Morbius theorem, you can bring the power inside to the cosine and sine functions if you write it in polar form. Having said that, perhaps it's best that we try to write it in polar form. Okay, so we got z over here which is equal to i plus 1. Okay, let's just let z be the complex number. So we take the magnitude, it will be 1 squared plus 1 squared which is equal to root 2. Not part of it all. Okay, and we also know that if in polar form when we sketch it out, okay, let me just make a, a quick sketch. Now here is 1, now here is 1. So the argument theta is equal to inverse tangent 1, which is equal to pi over 4. Not a problem at all. So, tackling the first number, okay, i plus 1, okay, is equal to root 2 cosine pi over 4 plus i sine pi over 4, like that, like so, okay, and this is a uh, bracket here, like that, okay? Now, just want to pay a uh, little attention, just as a quick reminder, even though it's 1 and 1, notice that the magnitude is root 2, so you better be careful a bit with complex numbers. Don't be deceived that if it's i plus 1, the magnitude is automatically 1, that's not the case. So later we take the power of this to root to 2008, likewise we do so for this, and this, okay, 2008. And the beautiful thing about the Morbius theorem, we can bring this all the way inside here, and this shouldn't be a problem because we let's just write that as root 2, 2008. Okay, it's just some big number, but that's the way we represent that. So we bring this one inside here, bring this one inside here. We have cosine 2008 divided by 4. I'm going to write 502 immediately. 502 pi plus i sine 502 pi. Okay, so what do we know about cosine and sine functions? Well, 502. We know that both the cosine and sine functions, the cycle repeats itself after 2 pi, right? So the 500 pi is over here. Okay, 500 pi is over here. And we know that 500 pi is divisible by 2 pi. Similarly, 502 is also divisible by 2 pi, okay? So, I would say that this value over here is already 0, and this value over here is already 1, okay? Maybe if it's not too clear, I will just draw the graph, the sine graph like that, okay? So, this is what 2 pi, this is 2 pi, and so on and so forth. So, the 500 and 2 pi would obviously land somewhere here, uh, on the curve, where the curve meets with the x-axis and the value is 0. So for the cosine, the, the graph is simply like this, and the value would be 1, okay? You can just type it in your calculator to see what I mean. So basically, this one becomes s root 2, 2008, okay? That is for i plus 1. So we just do the same thing for i minus 1, okay? i minus 1, okay? Now, I minus 1 is going to be like this, correct? If I, plus, if, one, if I plus 1 is over here, okay, if we minus 1, we're going to find the angle, the complex number over at the other side, okay? And then, down here, it's pi over 4. This one here, pi over 4 is going to be over here due to symmetry. So from here to here, it's going to be 3 pi over 4. Okay? You can also use the trigonometry identities, tangent, find this one out here, and then pi minus that value here. So pi minus pi over 4 is simply 3 pi over 4. So since we know that 
i plus 1 to the power of 2008 is this. Let's just do i minus 1, okay? Root 2 and it's cosine 3 pi over 4, okay? Plus i sine 3 pi over 4 or everything to 2008. So this is to the power of 2008. Same as this one over here, which is why I left it so this is to the power of 2008. Okay, but what do we know? 2008. Now, we got a 3 over here, okay? And we got 3 over 4. 3 over 4 here, 3 over here, 4 here. So we know that 2008 divided by 4 is 502 pi, okay? And then, after that, I'm going to times by 3. Well, it just seems to me that it's just also simply the same answer as before because as with the sine graph, the value is over here, okay? If we times by 3, we are just simply having the same value but shifted along the graph like that. But it's still the same value over here, which is 0, okay? Now, I know that this takes a lot of interpretation of sine graphs, which I'm quite familiar with. That's why I'm able to do all these manipulations. But let's just take it as that, as 3 times this is simply the same value, but you're just shifting the graph further on um, to the right. Okay, shifting or contracting, but I believe should be shifting. Okay, so anyways, this would simply zero, this is equal to one, so this is one, so this is the same number as that. So this minus this is minus i minus one to the power of eight. Since it's the same number, this one and this one over here, we just get zero as the answer. A simple application of the Morbius theorem bringing a large power inside using trigonometry identities to finding it out. I believe pretty simple, so you can move on to the next one.